Mark chapter number 5, a very familiar text, a very familiar account of a miracle that Jesus did. It's often referred to. There's something I want to look at in, within this miracle. So uh, chapter number 5, verse 25, the Bible says, And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. And when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that you are so good. We're thankful, Lord, that we can almost see the lights of that city. God, we're thankful for our blessed hope that, Lord, at any hour the trump could sound, the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them. Lord, we'll meet you in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, and what a day that'll be. But, Father, until then, I pray that, Lord, we'd be faithful. I pray that we would impact this world. I pray we'd see sinners saved. And I pray that, Lord, we'd shine his lights uh, in this dark, destitute world. Now, Father, for the next few minutes, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Lord, I realize many of your people have worked hard this week. They're tired in body. Lord, I pray that you'd refresh them and help them and strengthen them. Lord, thank you for that. Uh, Miss Marcy and Brother Jim are back tonight. I do pray you'd help Brother Jim. Lord, touch him and help him. Thank you for what you've done for Miss Annette. I do pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. I pray for Brother Randy. You'd help him tonight. Lord, I certainly do pray for others, Lord, that are facing adversity. God, you'd give them victory. Now, Lord, I pray you'd bless, and God, you'd get glory. And Father, we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to this text. I want to break it down. Again, I know many of you are familiar with it, but notice, if you will, the trauma set in a certain woman which had an issue of blood. This woman was traumatized. This was something that she couldn't take two baby aspirins and be over it. This is something that uh, haunted her from the time she woke up till she went to sleep at night. It was something that was constant in her life. Uh, it did not leave her uh, it was a trauma. Now listen, sometimes we think we have a trauma, but it's over in a day or two. Uh, but can I say this woman truly was traumatized. Uh, notice, if you will, the time frame of her trauma. It said in verse 25, 12 years. Uh, 12 years every morning, every afternoon, every evening, every night, uh, she dealt uh, with this issue of blood. Uh, can I say, it did not depart from her. Uh, and it was a long time, uh, over a decade, uh, she's been dealing with this. Uh, can I say, uh, again, it wasn't a common cold. Uh, again, it wasn't something that uh, uh, just a few uh, uh, weeks down the road, she was better. Twelve years she dealt with this. Uh, I I'm amazed. Some people think, uh, Lord, you haven't answered my prayer. Been praying uh, uh, for three whole days. Uh, 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 this woman, uh, uh, she dealt with a trauma of 12 years. Now we see the trauma, we see the time frame. Now notice the treatment. Look at verse 26. And it suffered many things of many physicians. How many of you have been to the doctor's office and you felt like you was a guinea pig? Brother Jim's got both hands up. This woman was a guinea pig. Can I say the physician of that day is not like the physician of this day? It truly was trial and error that day. I'm sure that uh, they went and got some leeches and put leeches on her. I'm sure that uh, they might have blood led her. They might have done all kinds of things uh, 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 that basically today we would say was torturous. She had suffered 
many things from many physicians. She went to one, suffered at his hand. Then went to another one, and another one, and another one. Heard about a specialist on down the next town, went and saw him. Twelve years she suffered at the hand of physicians. We see the treatment. Now notice the tab. Hmm? And spent all that she had. Now, Brother Donald, in the Hebrew, in the Greek, and in the English, all means all. She didn't spend much of what she had, didn't spend most of what she had. She spent all that she had. Now, I don't know how much she had when she started, but she saw many physicians for 12 years, and it cost her everything. We see the tab. Hmm? Some of you get upset because you got a copay. She spent all she had. That's what the Bible said. Notice, if you will, the transcendence or the results or the outcome of this wonderful treatment she received. Said that she spent all she had, verse 26, and was nothing bettered but grew worse. Now, I don't know about you. There's nothing like going to the doctor. He tells you what's wrong with you. He gives you medication, and you get worse. Amen. Can I say you never get your money back? Right. Right. Hmm? Hmm? So, well, you're paying for my experience, my expertise. Well, your expertise stinks. I'm worse. Right. Hmm? Isn't it a blessing when you get a good doctor that knows what he's talking about? And can I say there are some good doctors still out there, but most of them aren't allowed to doctor because they're playing with a computer nowadays. And they've got to meet certain parameters that uh, the hierarchies that run these medical facilities tell them they have to meet. So they're not really physicians anymore. And they're just instruments. But anyway, that didn't cost you anything extra. This woman spent all she had, 12 years suffered at the hands of many physicians, and she didn't get any better. She grew worse. Hmm? Now, I'm sure it was bad in year one. By year 12, can you imagine how anemic she is? Can you imagine how weak she is? Can you imagine how little hope she now has? She's trusted in every remedy, every physician, every treatment, every torture. She spent everything she has, and she's worse. The last thing she wants to hear is about a new treatment, a new doctor. Hmm? Now, notice, if you will, her turn. Look at verse 27. And when she had heard of Jesus, we see her turn. Mm, says that she heard of Jesus, and she came in the press behind. Now, if we study the whole text, you'll find out there's a great multitude around Jesus. Word has already got out that Jesus is like nobody else. That uh, there are folks uh, that are impotent, they're crippled, uh, but they get them to Jesus, uh, and they take up their bed, and they rise, and they walk. Uh, 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 they have heard that uh, uh, he can take a few fish and a few loaves and feed a multitude. Uh, 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 can I say that the Bible says in one portion that they brought all their sick to him uh, and he healed them all of their diseases. Uh, so word has gotten out, but notice she heard of Jesus. I don't know who told her, but somebody told her uh, about Jesus. Uh, somebody said, uh, Ma'am, uh, I know you've gotten worse. I know you don't have any trust in any doctors. Uh, I know you've spent all you had, uh, but Jesus doesn't charge a thing. Uh, and he's doing things uh, that nobody else can do. Uh, truly, he's the Son of God. Uh, he's the Christ. Uh, can I say the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, uh, hearing by the Word of God. Uh, and how can they hear uh, except there be a preacher? And how can they preach except they be sent? Uh, listen, you didn't ever got saved had you not heard about Jesus. Uh, God put somebody in your life. Uh, 
He put a godly mama, a godly grandma. Why? He put a preacher. He put a Sunday school teacher. Uh, somebody told you about Jesus. Uh, you'd have never turned uh, and put your trust in him uh, had you not heard about him and what he's able to do. Uh, can I say, you know what the world's waiting to hear? What Jesus done for you. They don't need to hear what Discovery Channel says about him. They need your voice where you can tell them how lost you was. You can tell them how without hope you was. Uh, but somebody told you about Jesus uh, and Jesus changed your life. We see her turn. Look at her trust. Look at verse 27. It says, And she touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Notice, Brother Ray, somebody told her something about Jesus. Because she said, I don't even need to get his attention. All I need to do is touch the hem of his garment. If I can get that close to where I can touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Now, I done told you, there's a great multitude. This woman's weak. This woman's anemic. And this woman still worked her way because she had some hope. She had some trust she had never had before. Uh, she said, I don't care how big the crowd. Uh, I don't care how many's around him. Uh, I don't care how many others he's helping. Uh, I've got to get to him. Uh, I don't need him to tell me anything. Uh, I don't need him to show me any extra treatment. Uh, I just got to get to the hem of his garment. Uh, by the way, uh, to get to his hem, she had to get low. Uh, you'll never get to meet Jesus till you humble yourself before him. Uh, but she had faith uh, and all it takes to change your life uh, is faith in Jesus uh, and she touched his garment uh, and she was made whole my dear friends uh, we didn't read it but Jesus said who touched me as the disciples said are you crazy there's a crowd all around us and you said who touched me but he knew virtue went out of him can I say there's a lot of people that pray and ask Jesus for things, but there are other people who pray and they put their faith in Jesus. He knows the difference. Mm. Then we see the transformation. Verse 29, we see that she, was, she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. It said, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. First time 12 years. Uh, look at verse 34. And he said unto her daughter, hmm, now, if you study this out, the first time he looks at her, he calls her woman. Right. Now he calls her daughter. Why? She's in the family. Huh? Yeah. Daughter. Huh? Uh, look what he said. He said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that, thy plague. Huh? We see the transformation. Her life's been changed because she got to Jesus. What a wonderful story. Hmm? Aren't you glad that Jesus isn't limited? Matter of fact, the only thing that limits the hand of God is our lack of faith. But that's a whole other message. I'm interested in verse 25. The Bible says a certain woman which had an issue of blood. This is what I want to preach on for the next few minutes. I want to preach on issues, issues. Everyone has issues. Uh Everyone has issues tonight. Can I say some have physical issues? Uh, now, there are a lot of people who think they have physical issues, but there are some people that really have physical issues. Some people need knee replacements. Some people need hip replacements. Some people have bad backs. Uh, some people have bad shoulders. Uh, uh, some people have broken bones. Uh, uh, can I say there are some people that have physical issues tonight. Uh, there are some people that have stomach issues. Uh, there are some people that have heart, heart issues. Uh, there are some people with blood pressure issues. Uh, I'm not minimizing any of your issues. Uh, I'm just saying issues uh, 
everyone has issues uh, and there are some people that have physical issues uh, uh, can I say tonight there are some people that have financial in issues uh, if you don't have financial issues uh, you ought to bless the name of the Lord uh, but there are some people uh, that have financial issues uh, 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 they just uh, 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 are working as much as they can uh, they're doing the best that they can uh, but it just seems like they don't have enough to go around uh, it's all they can do put food on their table uh, all they knew to, how to pay their bills. Uh, hey, maybe you're not in that shape tonight. Uh, there have been times in my life uh, I had to depend on God to send it because uh, I didn't have enough to get around. Uh, hey, there are some people that have financial issues. Uh, can I say, uh, there are some people that have mental issues. Now, I'm not looking down on anybody. I'm not accusing anybody. Please don't take this personally, Brother Donald. But there are some people that have mental issues. Huh? There are some people that have birth defect mental issues. Hmm? The world says they're handicapped. I find most of them are in their right mind. Uh, most of them have joy. Most of them have uh, 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 no trouble believing in Jesus. I told you about that little Down syndrome boy we had down there in Grenada. What a blessing that, that young man was. Huh? He'd look at me and say, friend! And I'd say, hallelujah. Huh? I got a friend. Uh, and he was a blessing. There are some people that are born with those kind of mental issues. There are other people that have uh, mental disorders. They have a, a lack of serotonin and, uh, 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 or whatever it's called. It, and, and the cerebral brain uh, issues and it causes them to be depressed. Or it causes them to be uh, uh, manic in certain ways. Uh, it causes them to have uh, bipolar disorders and other disorders. They just have some mental issues. It does not mean they're defective. Uh, it does not mean uh, uh, they're a second-class citizen. It does. All it means is they have issues. Uh, everyone has issues. Uh, uh, some are physical. Some uh, are financial. Some are mental. Uh, can I say this? Uh, uh, some people have nervous issues. I've known people that are just nervous all the time. They worry about everything. Huh? You used to call them worry warts. You're not allowed to do that anymore because they'd call you a bully if you call somebody a worry wart. But there's somebody that have nervous issues. Uh, they just wring their hands all the time. Just worried about everything. Uh, worried if the sun's going to come up. Uh, worried if it's going to get too hot. Uh, worried about this and worried about that. And worried about this. Uh, uh, there are some people that have nervous issues. They're just nervous. Huh? Uh, listen everyone has issues hmm? you say well my issue is worse than their issue no not in their mind everybody has issues some have nervous issues huh? can I say some have trust issues they've been done wrong they've been done wrong they've been done wrong and they will not trust because every time they trust in somebody they're done wrong can I say that there's been people in churches where preachers have done them wrong so they won't trust in preachers no more. I get it. Mm -mm. Can I say, I don't want them to trust me anyway. I want them to trust in the Lord. Now, I hope that they trust that I'm going to tell them the truth. Mm, that's why I, I'm real careful when folks first come, come to the church. I, I, don't, I don't ever put pressure on anybody. I've told you all this before. I, I visited a church one time. I went to hear a preacher I knew. I just went to hear him. He's a great preacher. I just want to go hear him. Huh? And so I just come in, sit down, wait for the service to start. I come to hear the preacher. He's a great preacher. I want to hear from heaven. The pastor comes up. He didn't know me from Adam. You know, I didn't know him. I just come to hear preaching. And he begins questioning me. I want to know my name. So I told him my name. I want to know where I worked. Want to know uh, if I gave a tithe? Want to know what color underwear I had on? I mean, he just asking question after question after question. I just come here preaching, huh? And he made me feel so uncomfortable because he was just badgering me with questions and questions and questions and questions and questions. Finally, he wanted, are you looking for a church? No. And if I was, it wouldn't be here. <laughs> made me feel uncomfortable, and I don't have trust issues. So I, I've never gotten over that. I've never forgotten that. I'm always thankful when we have visitors. I always try to be nice to them. But I don't want to ever make them feel uncomfortable. Amen. I wait till they join. They don't make them feel real uncomfortable. <laughs> no. Huh? There are some of you who have been coming here for years and I don't know where you work. 
And I probably won't know unless you tell me or volunteer it or unless we strike up a conversation and I find out what kind of work you... Why? I don't want to be one of them nosy kind of preachers because I don't like people that are nosy like that. I just don't. Makes me feel uncomfortable. But there are people that have trust issues. I get it. Can I say that? Uh, uh, there are people that have anger issues. Two amens on that. Huh? I mean, there, there are people that have short fuses and there are people that have no fuses. And can I say, thank God he delivered me of a lot of that, but there was a time in my life that my aunt Lynn's going, most spiritual she's ever been in her life. She's back there nodding her head, yes. I mean, I just, I, I, you didn't want to make me mad. But there are some people who stay mad. They're constantly angry at everything. Huh? That's not a good place to be. They have anger issues. Can I say there are folks that have family issues? Now listen, in the day we live in, that's a big deal. There's a lot of folks that have family issues. There are a lot of folks that have his kids, her kids, and their kids. I mean, there's, uh, there's families, there are folks uh, who's got spouses that don't come to church with them. There are folks whose children don't come to church with them. Uh, there are folks that have uh, all kinds of family issues. Uh, and I'm not making light of it. I'm just saying everybody's got issues. Hmm? Can I say that uh, uh, there are folks that have people issues? Did you ever get to where you couldn't stand people? You know, as a pastor, that's not a good place to be, but there are some days I'd like to live on an island. Really? Until I get there and see it's covered in iguanas, which are just snakes with legs. Huh? It's amazing. We go to the islands, and invariably, we'll go somewhere, and then I look over, and there's this sticking its tongue out at me. And I'm thinking, why me, Lord? Uh, but can I say there are times when people have people issues? The Bible deals with it, but we don't like to deal with the Bible. Brother Charlie, if you're mad at me, biblically, you are to come to me because you have an ought with me. Because chances are, I don't even know that you're mad at me. Hmm? I probably said something in jest and you took it serious and you started dwelling on it, dwelling on it. The devil started blowing on it and all of a sudden in your mind you're convinced that you know I hate you and all this other garbage and you're angry at me and by the way, he who angers you controls you because it's constantly on your mind uh, and you don't come and get it made right biblically and then you got a people issue. I'm going to do everything I can to avoid him. He don't like me anyway. You say, preacher, that doesn't happen it's all the time. That's why there's a lot of problems in a lot of our churches. Because the people issue isn't usually the other person. It's the person who fails to look in the mirror every day. Hmm? But there are people that have people issues. Have people issues with co-workers. I'll never forget, Brother Thad was working. I've heard about this woman. He had a co-worker caused all that gray hair he's got. I get it. I used to have co-workers. I understand. You, you, people issues. Some of you got neighbors issues. Huh? You got a neighbor that just gets all over you. you got, people have people issues. Huh? I'm just talking about everybody's got issues. Can I say that there are folks who have traumatic issues? There are things that people have suffered. A lot of times as a child, uh, they should have never been in that situation, but the adult in the situation wasn't an adult. It was a predator, uh, and they uh, have to live their life with that traumatic situation buried in the recesses of their minds. There are folks that have traumatic issues. Can I say there are folks that have fleshly issues? They have lust issues. I used to have a lust issue... And then I bought one. It's in my garage. Uh, it don't have to be another person for it to be lust. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. There are some people who have fleshly issues. They, there are things in their flesh that causes them to do things out of character because they give in to it. 
They have not learned to use the scriptures to rule over their flesh. Can I say there are folks that have stress issues? And if you have to send an hour's worth of traffic every day to and from work, you have a right to have a stress issue. But no, there are some folks that are always stressed out. They have a stress issue. They don't know how to deal with it. They've got a stress issue. Can I say there are folks that have sleep issues? They just don't sleep. They have insomnia. There are folks that have focus issues. Again, these are not a slight on you as an individual. It's, I'm just telling you, everybody's got issues. There are some people that just have a real hard time focusing on the tasks set before them. Can I say there are folks that have inferior complex issues? They just feel inferior. And they're constantly trying to make themselves feel good enough about themselves so they can count like other people. They just have that issue. Can I say there are folks that have forgiveness issues? They have a hard time forgiving people. Can I say there are folks that have shame issues? They've sinned or they've harmed and they've got it made right the right way and God's forgiven them or the person's forgiven them, but they can never forgive themselves. And they always feel ashamed. And can I say there are people who have faith issues? Hmm. How come it is, if we go see a doctor, whatever he tells us or whatever he prescribes us, we have no problem believing he knows he's an expert, I'll do what the doctor says, I'll take this medicine. Or we'll believe what a teacher says, because they've been to school and they've studied, and you know we believe what the teacher says. How many of you believe that Ben Franklin was flying a kite with a key on the end of it and it got struck by lightning and that's how he discovered electricity? How many believe that? Nobody believes that? Thank you, Sid. Why? Thank you, Owen. Owen's the smartest guy in the bunch right now, so. Why? Because the teacher told us that. Was anybody there to see it? But we believe that. How many believe George Washington was the first president? Why? Because the teacher taught you that. Was anybody there? But Jack, he was close. I think Lincoln came along in your day. No, we believe what our teachers tell us. We believe what the doctors tell us. We believe what scientists tell us. We believe in the theory of relativity, even though it starts out as a theory. We believe in H2O. We, you know, as water. We believe in these things because scientists have proven it. But how come we don't believe what the Bible says? Because we have faith issues. Well, that's just Brother Doug's opinion. Oh, that woman really got healed. So how do you know? Because God pinned it down. Well, how do you know? Because I believe what God said. Well, I don't. Well, don't hand to me that. If you believe what a teacher said, but you don't believe what God says, I can't help you. But the truth of the matter is, all of these issues I've had to face and help people as a pastor. Because everybody has issues. Now, let me help you with something. I'm going to help you. Please get this. If a doctor has prescribed you a medicine, do not quit your medicine without the doctor's consent. Brother Phil, if you have a bipolar situation, and I probably think you do, <laughs> and a doctor has given you some medicine that helps you cope with that disorder, when you start feeling better, do not quit your medicine because you're feeling better. Because you have an issue. And when you quit your medicine, you're going to go right back to where you were. Hmm? Amen. Listen. You wouldn't believe this. But I got a blood pressure issue. I take that little pill, my blood pressure is good. I don't take the pill, about three days, I don't feel too good. So I can say, I'm going to quit this. And I can feel horrible. 
where I can take care of myself because feeling horrible leads to a stroke. Because our family history, stroke and heart don't last too long. Huh? I have a heart deal. Huh? What do you do with the heart? Ice cream. Always helps. I don't have a heart issue. Thank the Lord. But can I say, there are some things. I do have a sugar problem. They caught me right on the border of being diabetic. Miss Nett says I am diabetic. All my doctors say I am diabetic. But I've read to be a di diabetic, you've got to be over that seven margin. I've never got to seven. So I'm not a diabetic. But I take a little pill. And if I don't take that little pill, I can't eat all them Swiss rolls. But I take that pill and my sugar's good. Huh? My AOC is always good because I take a pill. What I'm trying to say is if a doctor has you on a medicine, hey, you take your medicine. Uh, now I know there are some alternatives. I know if I lost a little weight and if I stayed away from the sugar, I wouldn't have to take that pill. I have lost a little weight. Very little, but I've lost some. Huh? I have cut out the soft drinks. I only drink one a day. As I know it's hard to believe. I used to drink six, seven a day. I've been drinking one a day ever since I had that little stint in the hospital. One a day. Huh? I've done good. But I haven't got to where I give them all up. Now, don't ask me to give up my Swiss rolls yet. All right? I'm working on it. I'm just trying to help you with something. There are some things that you can change your diet, you can change your way of life, and the doctor will take you off of your medication. But there are some issues you just need to take your medicine. Are we, are we on the same page? I want to make sure you know that. Because I don't want you to walk out of here and say, well, the preacher's preaching on issues, and I can get rid of all my issues, and I'll stop doing my medicine. No, because, Brother Phil, if you're on medicine and you act that way, I can't imagine you being off the medicine. Uh, if so, we're going to send you down to Bobby Cato's church for a little while, okay? You and him will get along great. Uh. So, I've said all that to say this. How we can resolve our issues... Now listen, if you've got a physical or mental issue under doctor's care, you keep staying under that doctor's care. But I'm talking about the issues that we deal with when it comes to not trusting God. Because a lot of our issues can really be solved if we just live by the Bible. Hmm? Uh, so let me help you with some things. How you can resolve your issues... How can you resolve your worry issues and your nervous issues and your people issues and your trust issues and your forgiveness issues and all these issues? You can get victory over them. Huh? Now, I'm not minimizing the issue. I'm not minimizing some things that you've had to face in your life. But I am going to give you what you can get, give you some help so you can overcome them. Can I say, first of all, you begin resolving your issue when you recognize you have an issue. You'll never get help till you recognize you need help. Can I say a sinner will never get saved till they realize they're lost? And can I say that no one will ever get help with their issue till they come face to face with the fact they have an issue? Hmm? Now, I didn't have much, pro uh, much problem coming face to face with my sugar problem and all that because I live with a nurse. I've been living with a nurse now for. 34 plus years and early on she said okay if you want to feel bad feel bad but you know now she tells me uh, no we got a grandbaby and um, no I, I'm not doing all this without you get some help alright but I'm just trying to tell you tonight if you never come face to face with that you have an issue and the rest of it, you've already checked out the rest of it, you're not going to pay attention anyway but your nervousness issue can be faced and can, you can get some help. Your lack of trust and lack of faith, you can get some help. 
You can get some help with your forgiveness problems. You can get some help even with past traumas. You can get help. I've seen too many people get victory and get help and God do for them what he did for this woman right here uh, when doctors couldn't help them, uh, uh, when psychiatrists couldn't help them, and scientists and teachers uh, and even preachers couldn't help them. Jesus can help you with your issues. But you've got to recognize you've got an issue. As long as you sit there like a bullfrog, I don't need revival. You need a GPS to get to the altar, but you don't need revival. Uh, since I picked on you with your mental issue that I don't know if you got or not, I appreciated your testimony that you was reading the Bible today and God showed you something. If you wouldn't have read your Bible today, God would have not showed you anything. But what I'm about to say, I'm saying as kind as I can say. Most people, all their Christianity, all their spirituality, all that they have is just that they come to church. Right. I don't have an issue. I come to church. If you don't read your Bible and you don't pray, and you don't meditate on the Lord, and you don't walk with the Lord, you've got a bigger issue than I can help you with. Because if you think all the help you're going to get is from me when you come here, you're not going to get any help. Can I say, this is not where we come to get our gas refueled. This is where we come to worship. And when you worship, He will fill you. But if you don't worship and all you do is attend... You get colder and colder and colder every time you come to the house of God. Brother Bob, people get gospel hardened. They hear preaching, they hear preaching, they hear preaching, but they never apply it, and they get hard to it, and it doesn't matter who's doing the preaching, it bounces off them like a rubber ball on a brick wall. They don't get any help because they don't think they have an issue. You're never, ever going to have your issues resolved till you realize you've got an issue. And by the way, everybody's got issues. From the pulpit to the back pew, everybody in this building tonight's got some kind of issue. You say, how can you say that? Because we're human. Your issue might not be my issue. My issue might not be your issue. And your issue might be minute, but you've got an issue. Hmm. Uh, Say, so how do you know that? Because God gave me this message. That's how He gave me this message Sunday. Sunday morning when I was in the shower, the Lord said, go read that issue of blood because everybody's got issues. So Monday I read it. You know what I found out? Everybody's got issues. And you'll never have your issue resolved until you recognize you have an issue. Can I say secondly? You'll never, ever get the issue resolved until you recognize you have an issue. And second of all, you research the Scriptures Concerning your issue. Boy, that got real quiet. And you get in the Bible concerning your issue, you'll find out how to handle your issue. Hmm? Just like I accused Brother Charlie of having an alt with me, you know how I know what to do about alts? Because the Bible tells me. Hmm? No matter what issue you have, you'll find somebody in the Bible that's got something very similar. And God deals with it. Hmm? Huh? You know what he deals with about physicians? They that behold have no need of a physician. But you know what that means? If you've got some issues physically, you need a physician. But if you research the scriptures, you'll find out some help on your issue. It amazes me how we can see uh, the beam in everybody else's eye, but not the moat in our eye. Mm. Mm. It also amazes me how many experts there are sitting in churches. Amen. Uh, Baptists know it alls. Know everything about everything, and the most miserable people in the world are know it alls. Mm. Uh, did you ever meet somebody who didn't have kids and tell you how to raise yours? Mm. And isn't it amazing these three beautiful children God's blessed you with? They're all different. Their makeup's different. Their response is different. Uh, their obedience is different. How you correct them is different. I, I, I'm just speculating because I don't know. I don't know if you have. But I imagine if you tell Charlie 
that he's disappointed it breaks his heart but I got a feeling you got to beat the devil out of that one right there huh just got that feeling uh, no he's a great kid he is he's a great kid I, I, I love all your kids I do and I love when we spend time on visitation with all the, all the kids that I spend on, on knocking on doors going out on visitation I learn so much but especially from Joseph I learn a lot from Joseph I really do because Joseph in Bashful he'll just tell you what he thinks and, 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 and I love him and Joseph a good kid huh? and all of you are good kids well I don't know Aiden but the rest of you are good kids I know Aiden's a good kid Huh? Listen, I'm proud of all these kids. But I'm trying to help you. You will not get help with your issue till you start researching the scriptures about yours. And by the way, Phil, you're not going to get in here and say, huh, where is bipolar problems in the Bible? <laughs> but you will find, lean not on thine own understanding. You will find trust in the Lord, acknowledge Him in all your ways. He'll direct your paths. Uh, you'll find the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You'll find that the Lord will help you with your issue when you start seeking Him about your issue. Hmm? Can I say this? Not only do you have to recognize that you have an issue and research the issue, uh, scriptures concerning your issue, but then the big one. You have to relinquish control over your issue. You have to admit that you have an issue, and then you have to admit the issue controls you. And you can't handle it. So I'm going to quit trying to handle it. I'm going to let go of it. A great day in your life when you learn to relinquish control of your issue. Let me help you with this. As long as you try to solve it yourself, the Lord will let you try. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to drive that car in a ditch because it's too big for you. It's an issue. You can't handle it. Oh, I can handle it. I can handle anything. That's your problem. You've got to learn to relinquish control of your issue. Hmm? When God began to deal with me about surrendering to preach which was in the summer of 1987 go google it it was a year okay <laughs> brother Ray there was a span of 50 days I was in church about 60 times I couldn't get enough of the Lord I just if I heard about a revival meeting I was going I just couldn't get enough and what I hadn't realized, Miss Marcy, is God had already started dealing with about me about releasing some things. I didn't realize. I'm just going to church. I'm just enjoying preaching. I just, I mean, Brother Sisson was anywhere around. I was going in here, and if Brother Dwight Kaufman was preaching around. I went in here, and, and Brother Dave Jones, I went and heard him. Anybody was preaching, I'd just go hear him. You see, there were some things that I thought that I always wanted in my life. One of them was my first Corvette. But see, I was working third shift in a factory, going to school full time. That Corvette was beefed up, got about seven miles of the gallon, Colonel. And I was making about $130 a week. Didn't take long to figure that thing out. Well, I had a boy I went to church with who wanted that Corvette so bad. And so I didn't realize, but I, I just got sick of the Corvette. So I sold it to him for pennies on the dollar, what it was worth. And the Lord was doing some things in my life, and I didn't even realize it. But then when he started making it real clear that he wanted me to preach his word, there were some things I held up. I was, whoa, whoa. I've done read enough of that Bible to realize, nope, that's not me. You see, I already mentioned I had a temper. And I was the guy that had no fuse. You looked at me cross-eyed and we was going to throw. It was, that was just the way it was. Uh -uh. I, I mean, and you'd better kill me because I was too stupid to stay down. Your cousin Lee proved that. But I'm just trying to say, I knew what the Bible said about the man of God had to be temperate. And 
I wasn't temperate. I was more of a, a, a striker, brawler kind of guy. I knew what the Bible said about that. And then I also knew that it wasn't good for a man of God, a preacher, not to have a wife. And I didn't even have one cooking. Uh, because I was so full of myself, none of them could stand to be around me long. And then I met this little brunette, and she wasn't a blonde. And she wasn't a blonde. And to, her, to me, you know, when she looked at me, it was a hillbilly that's not very nice. And so we didn't know, even know if we liked one another. But the big one was, I just felt like everybody would want, you know, have this attitude, he just wants to be like his grandpa. And so I held those things up before God. And the Lord just kept whispering with that still small voice. And finally one night I took all I could take. I'm sitting in church. And the message was about crossing over Jordan into Canaan land. And I really didn't hear much of the message because God was speaking. And finally Brother Clint, he said this. He said, what's wrong with being like your grandpa? Look at all the people he's won to God. Look at all the uh, uh, folks he's helped. Look at the stand he's making. That was it. I finally couldn't take it no more, and I surrendered. And I can be honest with you, God has removed that short fuse. Every now and then that guy shows up, but not very often. He gave me a wonderful, godly wife, and God has been good. But until I gave up control... I didn't get the issue resolved. And until you give up control with whatever issue you have, God will let you keep steering that ship and you'll keep running it in the ground and you'll keep blaming others for your issue. Well, I wouldn't have an issue if Ed Pierce didn't talk so much. We always blame somebody else for our problems. That's the American way now. Used to, the American way was you rolled up your shirt sleeve, you went to work, you worked hard, uh, and you made something of yourself, uh, and you were satisfied at the end of the night because you gave an honest day's labor for the wage, uh, and God blessed your family, and God blessed you, and you were satisfied with that. Now the American way is, oh, I got a problem, and it's because of somebody else. You got to realize you got an issue. You got to learn to research the scripture concerning your issue. And then you got to relinquish control of your issue. And then the final point, I'm done. Then you got to rely on Jesus to help you with your issue. Amen. This woman knew she had an issue. This woman came to the point where she could no longer afford any other kind of care. And she knew uh, that the only way she was going to get help with her issue, she had to release the control of it uh, and turn to Jesus and rely on him to do for her what she could not do for herself. And what happened? He solved her issue. And friend, it may not happen overnight. It may not happen with one prayer. It may not happen in one instant like it did with this woman, but I promise you, if you learn to relinquish control and rely on Jesus, he'll help you with your issues. So how you know? I've seen him help too many, and he's helped me too many times. I'm telling you tonight, everybody has issues. So quit looking at everybody else and blaming everybody else, and look unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But friend, if you never get in the Bible, if you never talk to the Lord, if you never ever trust God with whatever you've got in your life, you're never going to get any help. Hmm? Well, Brother Doug, I was listening to some singing the other day. What a blessing, getting a Bible. All singing does is set the table for worship. I love godly singing. And a good godly song will help get you through a valley. But I'm telling you, faith comes from the Scriptures. There's so many people sitting in our churches that are so shallow because they never put their nose in the Bible. And can I say, that little thing you carry in your pocketbook or that little thing you carry in your back pocket, fellas, uh, that phone has done more to take people away from the Bible than it ever has done to promote Christ, even though you can use that thing and find out a whole lot about Christ. Amen. Hmm? 
if God's people, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about if God's people would spend half the time that they spend on their phone in the Bible, we'd have revival like you've never seen. But we're too busy looking at cats learning to play the piano. I'll never forget, everybody kept talking about cat videos. Cat videos. I think, well, first of all, cats are evil, so I don't need to watch it. Huh? And second of all, who's got the time to sit and film cats? And then who takes the time to sit and watch people that have filmed cats? It's dumb. No offense, Thad. I know you're a cat lover. God will forgive you. That might be your issue. Huh? The other night after church, showed me a picture of his cat. Who cares? Looks like a demon on steroids to me. You say, Brother Doug, that's not very nice. No, one time they was gone, and we went over to help their cat, and that cat ruined my shirt, clawed me up. I mean, there was noises coming out of that thing. I'm here to tell you, they only come out of hell, that noise. All I can say is Egypt is always a picture of the world. And in Egypt, they worship cats. They're demonic. Hmm? Well, Thad got scarred because his mother raised bulldogs. So instead of just being satisfied, no, he went the other spectrum. He crossed over to the dark side. All I'm here to tell you, friend, is you got issues. I don't know what your issue is. But I know the devil is working hard to put issues in our lives. Amen. And if you're not careful, you'll take your eyes off Christ. Right. If you're not careful, you'll get cold and calloused. But there's help with your issue. And the help is in Jesus. This woman heard... You get no word, you'll hear. This woman turned, relinquished control, and this woman reached out and touched Jesus. And it changed the rest of her life. And you can get help tonight too. Now you can sit and suck your thumb of self-pity all you want to. Or you can get help. And help is available. And help is found in Jesus. Everybody has issues. But I'm not worried about everybody's issue. What about your issue? You willing to let God have it? I could have named a bunch of other issues, but I figured I hit the majority of the gamut. But are you willing to give Jesus your issue? Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. I don't know your need. I don't know your issues. I got a 24-hour day job taking care of the guy that I shave his face every day. But I do know one thing, Jesus can help you. He's no respecter of persons. I've seen him help too many. But you've got to want help. You never get help unless you want help. And if you want some help, you look to him, he'll help you. Folks are coming already, praying, they're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for helping that lady. Lord, that gives me hope you can help me. God, you can help everybody in this building. You can help everybody in this community. You can help everybody on this planet if they're willing to turn from their ways and turn to you. And God, I know there are some people that have issues. They do need medical care. I understand that, Lord, and you do too. But there's most people's issues they're carrying around and dealing with they can get help from tonight. So God, I pray you'd help people. God, get glory. And God, bless this invitation. Certainly, God, if there's somebody here tonight lost, that's their greatest issue. And God, I pray they'd come and trust Christ as Savior. Bless now in this invitation. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.